Welcome to installment number 320 of the mitzvahs as enumerated by Maimonides, the Rambam. We are in the book of Judges, and as such, we are discussing all the different um, situations that could arise in a Jewish court of law. Today, we have three mitzvahs, all negative commandments. Uh, firstly, we have negative commandment 315, which is the prohibition against cursing a judge. Secondly, we have negative commandment 281, which is the prohibition for a judge to hear the case of one litigant without the other being present. They both need to be present in order for him to hear the testimony. And thirdly, um, is negative commandment 316, which is the prohibition of cursing a Jewish leader. So on to uh, the discussion of the judge being required to hear this, you know, the story from both at the same time. Why would this be so? Why must a judge listen to both? Both must be present in order for him to hear. Because we know that when one party isn't present, it's easier to kind of fudge some of the details and maybe say some untruths. If the other person was there, they'd be more likely, they wouldn't have the chutzpah to speak the way they would if the other person was not there. There's a certain kind of comfort. Um, and you might say, okay, well, once the second person shows up, the truth will come out and it'll be clear what the truth was. However, first impressions are very important. And although the judge might know that this isn't true, he will still have certain ideas and a certain image of the case in his head. And that can still influence his decision. And thus it is not allowed. Um, in addition, we also have um, the prohibition of Lush and Hara speaking badly about another person is also falls under this category. We are told Midvar Sheker Tirchak, stay away from falsehoods. Um, and this does not only mean in judgments, but this means every single day of our lives. Stay away. The person listening is just as guilty as the person speaking, because if the person wasn't listening, the person speaking would have nobody to tell it to, and therefore uh, it would not be said. So they are just as guilty. And also the prohibition of giving false testimony falls under this category as well. Now, as we were saying, um, we have the prohibition against cursing a judge um, as well as a Jewish leader. Now, of course, we know that we have the prohibition of cursing any Jew. So why do we need this additional prohibition? And that's because, as we know, that when we stand in judgment, um, if we don't necessarily like the outcome of what the judge had to say, then we might be likely to say something that we probably shouldn't. And therefore, there is this additional um, prohibition here to be sure that we are very, very careful with what we say. And as we just said, we also have the prohibition of cursing a Jewish leader. And we know that no civilization can really function without a leader. This is the purpose of a leader, that just to resolve um, arguments or dis agreements between people. And of course, if the, uh, the, the judgment was a good one, then great. But if it wasn't necessarily the right uh, judgment, it's still good because it keeps the peace between people. And the minute we start disparaging their words or disparaging who they are, the leader, um, then we are right away disparaging almost, you know, our entire community, our entire civilization. And really, um, by us, you know, disparaging him, we are creating uh, unrest between the community, among the community, and this in turn really just affects us the most. So we must be very, very careful, of course, with the words that we say about others. And in addition, I would like to include here the importance of what we say about ourselves as well. Have a wonderful day.